So the man who travels on the electric diesel or electric trains is, is, is Elias, the slightly younger generation. Um, this is called Days Are Where We Live. That was called Chair and Dog in a Room. Again, it isn't really a house. And one of the clues are these little black squares up one side and down the other. The artist has explained to me that they represent those kind of tabs. So essentially, this is inspired by a kind of cutout of a house, and the tabs are to make it into a 3D object. The title, though, Days, comes from a Philip Larkin poem, which I haven't got time to go into, but again, have a look at the book. Um, essentially, Larkin is saying, as poems do, of course, that don't just read the surface. So really, this is an artificial construct, and really to stress that, um, Elias has made the path, it, it doesn't work in perspective. Just as Zaboli's chair is distorted and the dog is flattened, <laughs> um, here the path is not in the correct perspective. He wasn't the sh son of a shopkeeper, but his auntie was an usherette in the local cinema. And I now want you to think of that white path as a beam of light. And what also struck me was these little square, rectangular black tab areas, to me, represent sprockets in film. So Elias's kind of engagement with popular culture was through cinema. As a small boy, he would go into the cinema where his auntie was the usherette, and he experienced this kind of magical entrance into another world, which was film. And he remembers seeing that documentary I mentioned earlier, Pop Goes the Easel, 1962. He saw that even before going to art school and was excited by these young pop artists, including, as I said, Peter Blake, who incidentally, when he went on to be a student, Elias was there when Peter Blake came as a visiting tutor to Newport, Newport again. Um, so you have those direct connections. So this picture is partly inspired by a poem by Larkin, Packaging, which is very pop, packaging models, bright colours, and it's partly inspired by cinema, which, again, if you look at the perforations, they go around the door as well. So potentially, although not quite, that door could open. And in a way, the motif of the door is, I think, a kind of metaphor for quite a lot of what's happening in this room. The domestic, if you like, Zaboli is, is about the domestic on one level, as well as the play with colour. This is about the play with colour and a kind of domestic, and yet it isn't a real house. I mean, again, there are more complex issues here. This is to do with roles, role models, um, ways of living, days are where we live. Um, and there's a kind of subtext in this picture, which I haven't got time to go into now. But it is a kind of domestic theme, and there is the potential with that door. Now, that door becomes a real door, of course, you know, in front of me, behind you, with the, the Dennis Short. And Dennis, I'm happy to say, is still alive. He's very much alive and with us and still making. He's born the same year as Zaboli, who sadly is deceased. So Dennis is our third artist. Um, he was born also in 1927, the same year as Zaboli. Zaboli of Italian parents, Elias of Welsh parents, and the Dennis Short um, of English origins, but married, as he always reminds me, married to a, a Welsh woman called Arian Short, who again is still very much with us, and um, is 89. Artists are, can be ex exceptional on lots of levels, and what amazes me about Arian and Dennis is their kind of energy at 86 and 89. I attended the opening of this exhibition and I drove up from Swansea and thought that was quite a good journey. These two octogenarians had driven up from Pembrokeshire and they were going back the same night. Phenomenal. So I think, you know, these works we're looking at are by them when they're young, in this case young men, 
I, I wish I had time to tell you about the young women that are beginning to emerge as well in, in the Welsh context, but young men anyway, um, they still have that energy. But here we have the metaphor of the door. Now, Dennis, as I said, English in origin, but engaged with the valleys very early on. He married his Welsh wife in 1951 and was visiting the valleys in the 1950s and began as a painter. And again, if you look at some of the, the art books that are written that refer to him, um, for example, Peter Lord book, he will show you in one of his volumes, the Industrial Society volume, that Dennis Short um, won the National Eisteddfod in 1958. So he's essentially a figurative painter. If you like, a painter of the everyday, but not yet pop. Not in the 50s, really. It's a little bit too early for all of these artists. But um, that was the 50s. In the 60s, Dennis, who, as I told you, was English, was then teaching at Hornsey. So we've talked about Newport quite a lot. He was at Hornsey. Um, he was there in that, you know, that year, perhaps that, the, the pop year, or the year of social change, 1968 the year of good and bad, wasn't it? But um, in Hornsey, of course, you had the student occupation. So um, Dennis Short was there in that year. If you want the kind of political connection here, Kim Howells, who, as you know, has commented on art, he went to art school and actually was at Hornsey, and his own political artistic formation dates to that time. So um, Dennis was one of Kim Howells' tutors. And it's really in the 60s that Short makes this transition. So certainly when he produces this piece, which is 1971 to 2, it's called Havan. Um, also, it's got a Welsh title. Remember, he has a Welsh wife. Um, when he produces this, he's, he's now made that transition into being a sculptor, quite clearly. It's a, sculpt, it's a sculptural piece. Um, what I quite like as well, we had the orange in the Zaboli, which is then used in the Elias. But if you look at the roof of the Elias, the brickwork, almost, it's, it's tiling, I suppose, but it almost becomes the brickwork on here. So I think this is a, kind of a beautifully curated exhibition as well. So congratulations to Nick Thornton for his, his selection as well. So Short had been a painter and was painting the valleys in quite a traditional way and in a much more muted palette in the 50s, as indeed Zaboli was, and if you go elsewhere into the museum, you'll find those kind of low-key, subtle-coloured Zabolis um, in the 50s. But by this point, he decided he wanted to engage with the kind of typical Valley's house, which is the terraced house. This is a door to a terraced house. Um, he wanted to do it three-dimensionally. So he does a series of windows and doors, and they all date to the early 70s. So really, in conclusion, we're talking also about um, use of new materials. We had oil, which becomes acrylic, and now, whereas you know, a sculpture would traditionally perhaps be the figure, now it is not a figure, clearly. Um, it's certainly about popular culture. I mean, I don't know if you've walked around, but you've got the slippers here. <laughs> so you've got this kind of the everyday, and there is a sensor on top, which there wouldn't have been originally, so the light goes on and off um, at times as you move. So there's almost a kind of kinetic quality to it as well. A really, really special piece. There's this temptation to want to move <laughs> that. And I'm sure some of you will remember these kind of things um, in Valley's houses. Wonderful, uh, wonderful piece. But yes, the use of new materials. So whereas the sculpture would have been bronze and perhaps a figure, now it's aluminium and stainless steel as this is. And this set me thinking. I wanted to just leave you with this one thought. Um, we had the doors and the windows, and now we've got a real door. Of course, the 60s is when Wales is changing a lot. It's the decade that we get the Welsh office. It's the decade when the Welsh Arts Council becomes independent in 1967. And in fact, in that year, they'd started a poster print scheme, which had probably triggered Zaboli down the route of that painting as well. So there's another link. So we have an independent Arts Council in Wales, we have a Welsh office, um, but also, and perhaps here's the link uh, which occurred to me in my final preparations for this talk uh, last night, um, was at this point, Dennis is traveling between Wales and England. 
and traveling sometimes through the Rons or on the way to Pembrokeshire. But of course, by this period, the late 60s, the Seven Bridge has been built, the original one. Now, I'm sure you can all visualize the bridge, and probably all of you have crossed it, but think what you're doing as you drive. You know, this idea of social mobility, um, the metaphor there, you're driving through a gateway. Um, these works we've been looking at are interiors, they're exteriors. There was the interiors of Boley, the exterior Elias. This is both an exterior where I'm standing now and an interior. And of course, you know, the door is a two-way thing. Um, so perhaps, you know, maybe, I must ask Dennis about this, maybe the Seven Bridge was again a kind of trigger. But even if it wasn't, I think it's, it's a lovely kind of coincidence that that big, beautiful metal Seven Bridge, and I do think the original Seven Bridge, which was opened in 1966, is more beautiful, really, than the new Seven Bridge. It's a very sculptural object, object, and it's rectilinear. So I leave you with that thought, that um, the 60s is not just about international artists, it's about Welsh artists, and it's about social mobility, and perhaps the metaphor of the door, the valley's door, the interior, the exterior, perhaps all those things um, will make us revisit um, the work of, say, Alan Jones, which clearly is about mobility, or the work of Hockney, um, or the other works in the gallery. Maybe it'll make us think again that pop is a wonderful area, but it's actually a much more complex area than we'd thought previously. Thank you.